the master commanded that dishonest steward for acting prudently. If you are a bit confused by today's gospel, you shouldn't worry about it. Many people and even scholars are also a bit confused. And of course, there's a couple of reasons for this. One is our point of view. Other is we forget that it's a parable, which is a story that tells a moral or religious lesson. So according to Bishop Peter, in the parable of the dishonest steward, Jesus does not praise the dishonest steward because of his dishonesty, but he praises the dishonest steward because of his prudence. The steward acts prudently when he wants to develop friendship and secure his future. Jesus uses this parable to teach us that just as the steward tried to secure a place in this world, so we should seek to secure a place in the world to come. And when Jesus said, the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light, he would like to invite us to be prudent in our spiritual lives as we are in our worldly lives. In our, in our lives, especially in this country, everything is planned, even a funeral. I learned this when I live here. The archdiocese asked me to plan for my own funeral, and I did. And I have asked Father Novak to preach at my funeral mass. And hopefully, many of you would be there. And we know how to plan for the future. We look for the best doctors we can find to take care of our medical needs. We shop around for the best insurance policy to protect our home, our car, and our family in case of a serious accident. We try to save enough money to plan for the best possible education for our children. In short, we spend a lot of time, effort, and money just to survive this war. And that is a good and necessary thing to do. But today we are also reminded to spend time and effort for our spiritual lives that lead us to the eternal life. I remember a story about two people entering into a flower garden. One was a businessman and the other was uh, an artist. Both were looking at the flowers, but the businessman thought that these flowers might, be, might give a lot of profits. On the other hand, the artist was in awe with the beauty, the shape, the color, the smell, and the purity of the flowers. In our lives, we also have a temptation to think what's on earth only, but forget that something on high, the beauty of the kingdom of God, the relationship with God. We tend to care about our worldly lives, but not spiritual lives. We may fall in the temptation of exploiting, exploiting others to get more benefits for ourselves. The first reading today reminds us not to treat others unjustly and dishonestly, and not to love wealth, but to love God. 
when I learned philosophy long time ago, a priest taught me that human beings are different from animals. For animals, two meals a day make them happy. But human beings need not only food to eat, but also spiritual lives and relationship. As human beings, we yearn for something better, something higher, something holier. In the second reading today, St. Paul demands that there is one God, and there is also one mediator between God and man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself as ransom for all. Our God is good. Our God is holy. Our God is high. He's very good, very holy, and very high, higher than anything else in this world that humans can reach, higher than anything that humans can imagine. And thanks to Jesus, our God is also close to us. He's so close to us that we can hear his voice. We can touch his body. We can receive him. In these days, thousands of people have been lighting up in London to see Queen Elizabeth II lying in state. It's good to show love and respect to a good person. May we also be reminded there is someone very good, someone loves us here, who loves us, who dies for us, who saves us. He is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. When blending things on earth, may we also not to forget blending things in heaven. Getting rich is good. We need money to survive and to help others. Catholic charities need money. But getting rich dishonestly is not the way Jesus invites us to do. So my brothers and sisters, every day, especially at this Holy Mass, let us ask God to give us courage to love him above all things, and to love people with honesty, generosity, and justice. Let us ask God to allow us to have a place, a special place in his loving heart. <laughs>